Hello and welcome back and we're revisiting the Gigabyte Aurora 7000S. That's right, the 6,557 megabytes per second SSD upgrade for your PS5 system on that new beta for PS5. We're going to revisit it with a bunch of new games. First game is going to be Demon Souls, one of the launch titles for PS5. Really takes advantage of the SSD um, load time on this game, um, the SSD read I should say. And again, the the speed at which this game loads is just incredible. It's really like real blows your mind, really. But for now, let's make our way into this. The first test we're going to be running with Demon Souls is loading this game directly from a safe spot on the title screen. We're not going to be using online services, so there'll be no server delay potential. And we're loading straight into the game there into the main nexus. So we're going to go on the screen. We're loading from a title screen, save game, and boom cannot distinguish between them look at the speed on that that game loaded so goddamn fast it was mind-blowing two to three seconds there and running absolutely fine on the aurora 7000 let's move on to loading from an arch stone there let's load the game from a new area where we're going to be loading from the nexus into another part of the game this is the second one um and from here we're going to have a look at them side by side and uh, a little bit longer Boom, pretty much indistinguishable. Again, loading into the main nexus versus loading into the world, these larger worlds clearly takes longer, but again, still fantastic performance. And the often overlooked, I would say, Aurora 7000S doing very well here indeed. So let's move on to loading from another arch stone. This is loading to the start of the game. This is going from the nexus once again. So again, same save spot, loading at exactly the same time, different storage medias and let's have a look and you know what near enough identical can't fault them they have loaded at the same time there so again the gigabyte aurora is keeping pace beautifully within the system versus that ps5 internal ssd so we'll move on to our next game an often requested ratchet and clank riffs apart we're going to go into riffs apart here and again, we're loading from two areas. We're going to load from a save game checkpoint right at the start of the game after the initial cutscene. So it's not going to include the cutscene. <coughs> and then we're going to load from around 20, 30 minutes into the game. I've mentioned this in other videos, that large warp transitional area that was previewed when the PS5 was first launched there. So let's make our way in. We're going to go from that save spot there on the main menu. And again, we're loading from it now side by side at exactly the same time. In other testing, the internal SSD seemingly loads quicker. Again, I think I real got I think I got particularly lucky with that original load there. So I am inclined to query that. Uh, how those two compare. And I have compared this on other SSDs as well. But for now, going through this right now, loading that um transitional effect um is the one that we've really been looking at there because this area it's semi on rails um but just going through each of the bits there, there's still a lot of assets being drawn here by the way this isn't the kind of nerfed um high frames per second mode this is the full graphical details mode there that we're running from to make sure we're you know getting all of the assets drawn into the game as well as possible as we make our way through this and make our way onto the next save spot, which again, for those that have played this, it's a transitional moment. I don't think it spoils anything. I don't think I've got to put spoilers on this video, but it's semi on rails, but I do move around as much as I can. And there's a lot of graphics being generated here all the way through all these different worlds, all these different uh, things being created in real time. And again, all of this thanks to that SSD being, you know, so ridiculously fast. But both of them running spectacularly similar paces. Um, I think right now the Gigabyte is running largely the same pace as what we saw earlier there um, on the uh, PS5 SSD and on other SSD videos that we've been running in the last few days. And let's carry on. We're transitioning through all of those warps. We're into the final segment of this transitional event here. But doing absolutely fine there and again slightly different what we're doing on both screens but it won't make a difference because an explosion kicks into that cutscene there 
and I would say the Gigabyte is running exactly the same performance there for these cutscenes as we're seeing on that internal SSD and little to no difference I would say between them. So again we're going to come out of that and into our next game Resident Evil 8 or Resident Evil Village. And Resident Evil Village there we've got two moments. I know this is a multi um, uh, console platform game but I will say the PS5 version still looks stunning and it's got a lot of graphical assets and fidelity that need to be utilised. We've got going for internal at the castle uh, as a load game and we're going to run the second test running through a large area of the game. And again, if you've watched these videos, you know what you're going to see. But again, if you haven't watched these videos before, I've got to announce it. So we'll make our way in, loading from the same save game there and clearly exactly the same there's probably like a hundredth of a second difference once again i'm well aware that the screen on the left is very grainy i have to keep repeating this in the videos but i'm sorry it has to be said recording from two separate playstations and the result was recording from those two separate playstations that the one on the left had different contrast settings that weren't picked up until after the capture took place we're now going into the second load game here again loading from a save spot directly from the title identical and in this save spot what i've done is made my way through a large portion of the game just running non-stop from the stronghold all the way through to the start of the game there in the village and the merchant and the altar near the beginning again we're doing this one to introduce as many assets and triggers as possible in the local environment and of course if there are any hidden loading screens any Loading screens where the game doesn't expect you to do this and then it forces a quick intermittent freeze load on you. This is what we're trying to make sure that the SSD isn't going to do. We don't just want the standard initial read. We want to make sure that any additional data is being pulled as quickly as possible during this segment. As you can see there, I know the light makes it a bit tricksy there. But again, take my word for it, things are running as smooth as custard. Although, obviously, the rendering there, because of the contrast on the PS5 SSD there, little bit muggy. Nothing to do with the SSD, it's all the capture card and the contrast on the uh, second PS5 that was uh, loaned for this video and a few others. Um, but, again, faultless. We're seeing no hidden loading, we're seeing no drops in frame rate, we're seeing it going all the way through absolutely fine and back to the merchant as we make our way onto our second to last game which is Doom Eternal. Once again we have already tested Doom Eternal in a previous video but we've revisited it simply because with these tests that we're running right now we want to make sure these are all fresh for each of the benchmarks and again all of this is going to be utilized in the larger comparison video at a later date with the top four or top six ssds but as we go into this it's just a single load screen here we're loading doom from that initial save spot there going into the hellscape earth we're loading it in directly from the title to see which is quicker again i don't think they could have been any more in sync there the loading there at the beginning but Yes, the uh, Gigabyte was the quicker of the two there. Even though they loaded at exactly the same pace there, I would say the Gigabyte was that pinch quicker there indeed. So, again, lots of people still play Doom. I know it is uh, technically a PS4 game, but this is a PS5 um, upgrade game with you know, better graphics, better frame rate, ray tracing, etc., etc. All of that is all enabled for this video while we're trying to draw as much data from the internal ssd as possible or in both scenarios and the final game as you no doubt know if you've seen the other videos is of course grand theft auto where we are using gta 5 an incredibly popular game my god it's actually a stone cold classic it's that old now and we're running it from the internal ssd we're not using um, a usb or anything this game is living on the internal ssd or the uh, aurora 7000s ssd and we're going to be testing these games side by side and what are we going to test well again if you've seen the other videos you know but otherwise we are loading the game from the title screen gta 5 has one of the longest and most annoying load times for a game these days it's incredible both of these are starting at the same time but it still blows my mind that gta 5 takes this long to load in 2021 yes there's a lot of assets yes it's had a lot of updates and although that dude did send them exactly the means with to improve load times and they paid him for his time 
console gamers have still got really long load times for this game. I mean, we're already at 25 seconds. I get we loaded from the title screen, but for a game on the PS5 that originally came out on the PS3, you can talk about extra assets and graphics all you want, but this load time, wowza. Still, nonetheless, let's see how these two compare while the game is loading directly from them on either platform. Because it'll be interesting to see. This has been a real decider of a game when we've looked at different loadings uh, between different platforms. This is this and uh, Rift Apart. Yes, it looks like the internal SSD was the quicker of the two between them. It gained a slight advantage, or one would argue the Gigabyte Auroras may have had the tiniest dip in performance during the course of those operations. Not much, but enough of the performance difference between them to be around a, th you know, a third, maybe even a quarter or a fifth of a second. So not huge, but enough to be noticeable. But this has been my second round of testing on the Aurora 7000S from Gigabyte. We've got the head-to-heads coming next, guys. Stay tuned for those, where we compare all these SSDs and remove the PS5 SSD from the equation. Click like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to learn more, visit the links to all of the videos and products and everything I talked about in today's video in the description, and I will see you on the next video.